Hey everyone, today we're going to talk about all the cool things you can do with LEDs. We're going to talk about the wiring, the setup and programming, so you can do cool things just like I've got going on here with the Larson scanner on my latest builds. Betaflight has a really cool feature built in that's going to let you control WS2812 programmable LEDs. There's a few important things to know and we're going to try to cover as much of that as we can in this video. One of the first things that's worth mentioning is when you're installing LEDs, if you have a lot of LEDs, they can use more current than a lot of people would expect. Now typically, you're going to power your LEDs off of the 5 volt rail on your flight controller. And this is typically powered by a built-in 5 volt regulator. Most modern flight controllers are going to support about up to 2 amps of current on that 5 volt rail. Now the reason I'm mentioning this is because if your flight controller is limited at 2 amps, some now are going to have more, but every time you connect a device to that power rail, you're obviously going to be consuming more power. A lot of our modern electronics, like your receiver, camera, and VTX are all going to be powered off of 5 volts. And if your board has a 2 amp regulator in it, those three devices can come pretty close to consuming those two amps right out of the gate. Not to mention, you're going to need a little bit of overhead on that to be able to power things on the flight controller itself. Like the processor, for example. That's pretty important. So by adding a whole bunch of LEDs, you very quickly can cross that two amp threshold and burn out the five volt regulator, thus ruining the flight controller. There's a simple solution to that. You can get an additional five volt regulator. This one is two and a half amps. And if I ever thought that I was close to that five volt limit, I would just simply add one of these to be on the safe side. And this thing is going to provide more than enough power for all the LEDs I would ever want to install on a quad. These things are super cheap. I want to say this one costs like two bucks and it's capable of supplying a constant two and a half amps of current to anything that's connected to it. You just simply power it up with VBAT, dial in the output voltage, and you're good to go. But this isn't really what we're talking about today. However, it is something that I thought was worth mentioning. The real star of today's show are these, the WS2812 programmable LED. And I've got a little baggie here of a whole bunch of individuals, and I'm gonna talk about wiring them, and then we'll do the program part. So what do you say we jump on over to the overhead camera and I'll give you a brief description on how you're gonna wire these guys up. So in this case, these are all single individual 50-50 LEDs. These things are super bright and they actually light up pretty good in the day. But the reason why I'm using these individual ones is I wanna show you a basic example of how you're going to wire them which is thus going to translate how you're going to do the programming later on. Now, on each one of these pixels, on the back side, there's a digital in and also a digital out. Essentially, what you're going to do is you're going to daisy chain each one of these LEDs making up your string. So your first one, you're going to go LED in, LED out is going to go to the digital in, digital out, digital in, digital out, whoops, lost one. <laughs> digital out, digital in, digital out, digital in, so on and so forth. So essentially what you're doing is you're creating a string of all these LEDs in order. Your first LED is going to get a programmable address of zero. The second is going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, and so on until you've completed your string. It doesn't matter the orientation that you install these on your quadcopter, as long as they all are in numerical order starting at zero and ending wherever you end up. So just remember, your first one is digital in, the digital out to digital in, and then all the way through until you've wired all your LEDs. Wiring these can be quite tedious. In fact, on a lot of my builds, it's taken more time to wire the LEDs than it has to do the whole entire rest of the build. However, if this is done properly and you properly address all the LEDs, the benefits are fantastic because you can do really cool effects like you saw at the beginning of the video where I'm using the Larson scanner, that old cyborg effect, to scan through all the LEDs on the quad. And let's look at another example that I've got right here. These are pre-installed, so I'm hoping you can see them okay, but this board is wired exactly the same as those individual LEDs. We have all our pads right here connected on the end to make it easy and convenient to wire it up to our flight controller, power distribution board, wherever we need to go. 
but while being installed on this board, they are all still wired in the string as I previously mentioned. So if this was our first LED, this would be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. We come out of this to the digital out, which would then go to the next board, and we would continue on. So the next board will be 5, 6, 7. I think you guys get the idea. All right, we've got all our LEDs wired up. And remember, input to output to input to output so on and so forth, essentially we're making a daisy chain. Let's connect up to Betaflight and I'll show you how to do the programming. After connecting, your first stop is going to be taking a look at the configuration tab. We're gonna scroll down and as we get to other features, you're gonna see right here there's an item for LED strip. By turning this on, you're going to enable the LED strip configuration tab here on the left hand side of Betaflight. I've already turned mine on. I have the LED strip available. So now I'm going to click and I'm in the configuration. I wanted to start with an example of LEDs that are already programmed so you guys can get an idea of exactly what I'm doing here. Remember we talked about our first pixel being zero, then daisy chaining to the rest, zero, one, two, three, four. And within this window, you wanna try to duplicate the layout as close as possible and that way you're gonna have a good end result. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna clear all this out and we're gonna start programming them all over again. Betaflight has the capability of addressing 32 individual LEDs. All we have to do is assign the address within this configuration window. So step one right here is wiring order mode. This is gonna tell Betaflight where the LEDs are located on the quadcopter. So I'm gonna click this, our grid is gonna change, and now I'm gonna start plugging in my LED ordering numbers. Starting at LED zero, I'm gonna click on the appropriate box, and I'm going to work my way through until I have them all addressed. Let's get that done. Okay, you can see how I've worked my way around the quad. Again, considering all the digital ins and outs, our first strip, zero through four, our second strip, five through nine, our third strip, 10 through 14, and our last strip, 15 through 19. Betaflight is going to count the amount of LEDs we have installed. You can see we have 12 remaining that we could program. Uh, this is up to you if you want to include them or not. I didn't on this build, but that's a-okay. Once we're done with the wiring order mode, we're going to click on that same button again, and it's going to lock in our LED positions. Now, we need to tell Betaflight what we want those LEDs to do. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to click on an LED, and we're going to give it some instructions. The first option is the function of that LED. What do you primarily want it to do? And by clicking on this box, we're going to have a whole bunch of options here. We can choose color, modes, orientation, arm state, battery, RSSI, GPS, and ring. Usually I'll choose color and then I'll pick an additional modifier to change that state of the LED and do other fancy things while I'm flying. So I'm going to pick color and we can see that we've got a few other options to pop up here as we go. We can have the color change with throttle. So as you increase and decrease the throttle, it'll cycle through the RGB colors on the LED. If we click on that, we can see there's even more options in there based on transmitter input. So we could sign an auxiliary switch to this to change the colors. We could have the colors change with roll, pitch, yaw, whatever you like. Personally, I like throttle the best on this one. I think it's kind of cool to constantly see the colors of the LEDs changing as you're zipping around. Our next modifier is blink always. <laughs> you want to have some obnoxious LEDs and have them always blinking? Choose this option and they're always going to blink. For this particular quad, I started with Larson Scanner. So I'll just go ahead and turn that on. And that's how you saw the LEDs kind of zipping back and forth across the arms. I think that one's pretty cool. And that's just what I decided to select with this particular build. Now, in addition to the color modifiers, we also have an overlay. We can overlay with warnings, indicator, or functions of your VTX. Personally, I haven't really experimented with these options too much, uh, but they're here if you wanna give it a shot. You can set the orientation of the LEDs, which way they're facing. Again, this is for an advanced function. Maybe you're trying to do a circle around the whole quad, or maybe you want the Larson scanner to jump from arm to arm. Uh, this is what you would use to help configure those options. And lastly, because I picked color, this grid right here, 
this is what's going to allow you to set the particular colors of the LEDs. And we have all these predetermined built-in options. Everything from zero, which is off, one is gonna be bright white, so on till we get to the end. I don't really know what these two are supposed to represent, but 14 and 15 are there. In this case, for this build, since I'm running green props, I'm gonna click the green option. And that's about it. We have programmed our first LED. What's important to note is you don't want to jump around while you're programming these individual LEDs. Because they're operating in an addressable daisy chain, in order for all of them to work correctly, you are going to have to go through LED zero, ending at whatever your end is. In this case, it's 19. I can't just jump to LED 19 and expect it to turn on. Because if Betaflight doesn't know those additional LEDs are there, it cannot pass the data and it's not going to address those particular LEDs. What you are going to have to do, which is a little annoying, is do every single one of these individually. So now that zero is done, I'm going to go to one. I'm going to choose color. I'm going to choose Larson scanner and I'm going to pick my color. I'm going to go to two. Same exact thing. Choose color, Larson scanner and do the color. Now I'm going to have to go through and do every one of these. I'm going to get this done. We'll plug in the quad and I'm going to show you the end result. I have configured all of my LEDs or did I? This is something that I want to point out. Once you've assigned a function to that LED, the pixel being represented in beta flight is going to give you an indicator of the functions that are assigned to it. And if you want to set up all your LEDs identical, you're going to see that the indicators on every single LED should be the same. It's green, I've got a little purple dot indicating Larson scanner, and they should all match. But look at this little guy over here, number 12. Notice how it doesn't have a dot on it? And that is because I forgot to select Larson Scanner. Okay, I didn't forget. I want to show you guys, but you know. Um, also, if I pick another option like Throttle, say I pick Throttle by accident, we're going to see that this pixel here, the throttle is represented by this little orange dot in the left-hand side. So there's definitely something wrong here, something that's going on. This pixel isn't going to react like the rest of them. Now, maybe you want to assign all kinds of different things to these pixels. Maybe you want some of them to change color with throttle. Maybe some of them you don't want to change color with throttle. Uh, maybe you want the Larson scanner and also having them all change color with throttle. I mean, that's all possible. You can add all these options. But really what I want to point out is the individual pixels are going to show you the function that it has assigned to it. So you can very easily identify if you've made a mistake somewhere. I'm just going to shut off that throttle. I'm going to hit save. Don't forget to hit save on this, especially if you have a lot of LEDs, because if you don't, you're going to have to go back and do them all over again. Alrighty, we're done programming them. Here's our end result. I hope you guys can see, but now I've got the Larson scanner re-enabled on the LEDs. It's going to cycle around all the arms and pass back and forth as it goes. That's essentially it. It's really not too difficult to set up your LEDs as long as you keep a few key things in mind. Number one, make sure your flight controller can provide enough power to juice up those LEDs. Number two, remember you're making a daisy chain. Your first one is number zero. You're going to go in and come out. Your second one is going to be number one, so on and so forth until you've completed the daisy chain all the way around your quadcopter. While doing your programming, you want to make sure that the LEDs are properly represented by that configuration window in Betaflight, and that's what's going to allow you to do these cool effects if that's what you so desire. Here's one last thing that's probably worth mentioning. If you don't want to go through all that effort and daisy chain the LEDs, you can parallel them, but essentially what is going to happen is every single LED is going to have the same address and it's only going to have one function. So if I wired every single LED to the end and didn't do the daisy chain, whatever I set that one LED at, all the rest of them are going to get addressed like that and get configured the same way. There's nothing wrong with that. Sometimes people just want a specific color or a single specific function, and that's an easy way to do it, but it is not going to allow you to do the fancy programming like I have here with this cool cyborg Larson scanner. Well, that's it. 
That's all I got for today. Happy LED configuration. Stay safe. Thanks for watching. And I'll catch you in the next one. <laughs>